Okay, so this is going to be a practical introduction to Python, which is one of the most popular programming languages right now, and has been one of the most popular for the last 10 years or so. Um, if you already know what a programming language is, you can skip ahead a couple of minutes, um, there will be timestamps. Uh, if you don't know what a programming language is, so basically your computer or your phone, or if you have a smartphone, of course, or basically any other electronic device that we use at the moment is a calculator. Uh, you, on, a, on, a, <clears throat> on a regular calculator, you can type numbers and do mathematical operations. And this is pretty much all that a computer does as well. It's just that uh, you also have like a different kind of output. You have like graphical output, you have different apps that do things. But in the end, that output is just numbers and your screen, your monitor, is responsible for translating those numbers into colors and uh, what the computer does is just doing mathematical operations on those numbers. So how do you tell the computer that you want to display certain, something specific? How do you tell the computer that you want to run an app? Basically you just you just touch, uh, if, if it is a smartphone you just touch on the icon or you click double click on it on the computer but the way that app works is not wired into your, your machine. It's something you can download. It's a software. And software, you can write it. Uh, you, can, you can make it by writing in a, in a language, in many of them actually, which are called programming languages. And these, are, these languages are a mix of English and mathematical symbols. And you can see some examples on this screen here. Uh, the one on the left is uh, C and the one on the right is Python. Uh, and basically you write in these strange languages and you do what uh, you, you compile them, except Python is interpreted, which is a little bit different, but you translate them into machine code, which is something your computer can understand, and then your computer knows how to do uh, what you want, how to display your app, how to make them work, uh, if you write the correct things uh, in both languages, of course. Okay, so Python, as I mentioned, it, it is at the moment one of the most popular programming languages. Uh, this is the official website, it's python.org, very easy. Um, if you want to try these examples uh, as I go, you can download them. There's a, a guide here on the official website, it's wiki.python. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, it tells you, depending on your operating system, what, what you need to do to install it. Uh, but I, you can actually also use it online. If you, from your homepage, you click here, launch interactive shell. Uh, you'll get uh, the couple of seconds uh, this will load up, okay? And this is the uh, the same shell that I will use for the first, maybe, half of a video. Okay, so this is the same uh, shell that you can find on the Python website, but install on my computer. You can add the same if you install it. Uh, depending on your system, system, you might need to type Python in a terminal or command prompt, or type py.x, I think. Uh, you can check the on the Python website if, if they tell you how to do it. Um, once you're here, uh, the first thing that you can do, well, you see here, it tells you some stuff like the version of Python installed at the moment. Uh, make sure that you install Python 3. There's still some versions of Python 2 going around. Uh, you just ignore them. Uh, once we're here, uh, the first thing we can do is to use Python as a calculator. So, for example, if we type 2 plus 2, it tells us 4. And basically, here you can give commands to Python. And for each thing you type, which can be a simple expression or something more complicated, it will immediately output the result. So you can, of course, use the, all the usual operations. You can use parentheses. For example, say I want to do 3 times 2 minus 5, should be minus 9. Um, yeah, so you can do math. Uh, in contrast with other languages, uh, division, the division sign, uh, if you do a division between two integer numbers, uh, you get a, um, a number which may not be integer. Uh, if you want the integer division, so if you, with a decimal part cut off, you use double division sign. And this way you get the division without decimals. Uh, there's of course also the um, remainder of a division say something like this, or say another example, yeah, and uh, a couple of other operations that are already in included in Python are 
uh, raising to a power. So two to the tenth is ten thousand, uh, thousand twenty-four. Sorry, and yeah, okay. I think this is all I wanted to tell you about. I, if you need more operations, you can type import math, and now you get access to all different mathematical functions. But you need to type math dot first, and then, for example, if you want to do square root of something like square root of uh, 3.4, uh, you get your answer. Or other things like the cosine of 185 says, uh, it's almost minus 1. Um, yeah, and if you um, don't know how to do something in Python, you can of course always Google it. That's how that's how we're all from 20 years from now. Uh, <coughs> that, that's how we're all in the last 20 years. But you can also type just help. Uh, I think like this it doesn't work. Yeah, it tells you that you need to type help with parentheses. Like this help is technically a function. Uh, we will learn at the end of these videos what functions are and how to define your own. But for now, just let's just ask for help. And here it tells you uh, how you can get documentation. It tells you which website you can go and how you can get inline documentation. Uh, does it tell you? I think I think it does. Oh yeah, the very first thing it says if you do help object or uh, there's also another way which I will show you. Uh, you get information on that thing. So, for example, if I do, well, here actually I'm inside the help prompt, so I just need to type, for example, math, and I get into this, uh, sorry, it's a bit, uh, yeah, I get into this documentation page, uh, which tells you all the functions that are inside the math library. Uh, let's, now you see that the prompt is a bit different here, it says help, so if you want to go out from help, we just uh, type enter, and here it tells you you are, we are outside. And there are two ways to ask for help. If you know the exact name of the object you want to ask for help, uh, of a Python module, you can just type it like this. Otherwise, if you don't know the exact name, you type um, uh, string. So for example, if you do help uh, math, it's, I think it still works, because math is a, the exact name of a Python library. But if you do, I think with a command such as like import that we used before, uh, it doesn't work because it doesn't recognize import as an object, so you have to type something like this. And here it tells you how the import statement works. Uh, let's scroll through this page because I want to show you something about import. Uh, let me show you. Okay, here we go. Uh, I couldn't find it. <laughs> it was right here. Uh, you can use this different syntax. So what, when we import the math, we use import math in this way. Uh, and then we have to use math.sqrt to do the square root and similar things. Um, if we use something like from math import and then specify something where we could replace with something with um, asterisk star uh, to mean import everything from math, we don't need to use the math.sqrt. So let me let me show you. Um, let, let me show you that now we cannot do like sqrt of five. It doesn't work because it doesn't find sqrt unless we specify math.sqrt of 5. But if we do from math import everything, now we can use it without saying math. Dot. Okay. Uh, a key concept in every programming language is that of variables. So let's say now we want to do we just computed this square root of 5 here, and we want to do something else, like compute uh, 3 times square root of 5. We would like not to repeat sqrt5 because we just computed, so we don't want to rewrite everything every time. So one way to do it, it one way to reference the last result you, you, you received in this calculator version of Python, uh, is to use the underscore operator. And if you do this, you see that I get three times uh, the square root of five. So actually let's just compute it to see that I'm not cheating. It's the same result. But uh, what happens if I want to reference a result that I had uh, way back so somewhere up here? Well, this is the, like some, some somewhere up here. So now the last result that I have is three times square root of, of five. Uh, what if you want to reference something before that? Well, 
way to do it is to use variables. So you can give names to your results, to your operations, and to the results of your operations, and then use those names in other uh, operations to, uh, to get different results. So for example, if I say something like x equals uh, 45, now notice that Python doesn't respond with the value of x, but if I want to get this value that I just computed, well, I didn't compute it, I just wrote it, but I can type x and get this value. So if I say something like x minus 5, it's going to be five, uh, 40. So uh, in this way, you can save all the results you want, and you can use them uh, to compute different stuff. So now let's say I have y equals uh, 3 times, I don't know, x plus 2. And now the value for y is 141. Uh, so this is quite quite useful. Um, so variables are, are called like are called <coughs> sorry are called like that because they um, they, they can change if you want. So if I want to now x is 45, but if I want to change its value, I can say x equals uh, something like 34, and now x is 34. And notice that when I did this, now I defined y in terms of x. But now, I ch but now that I changed x, y did not change, uh, because basically what what happens when you when you initialize a variable like this, you type some name equals um, some value, what or like here, what Python does is it computes this value. It doesn't matter if here there are variables, it figures out how much this is worth, and then this value, the final result, is saved inside this box called called uh, y. Uh, so y does not really depend on x, y is not a function of x in this language, it's just a way to save this value. Um, yeah, and notice that the name, I wrote x and y, but it can be anything, so if I write like my variable uh, with long name number 3, let's say, uh, this is a valid name for, for a variable, and I can say like something like x plus uh, my, well, maybe I'll just copy this one. Yeah, and yeah, and you get the result. Uh, so the only rule I think for names, they can use a combination of letter, underscores here, uh, and numbers, but they should not start, they must not start with a number. So I think this is the only rule for your for the name for your variables. Um, and yeah, so variables also have a type. Uh, in other languages, when you declare a variable, like we did x equals 34 here, the first time we use a name for a variable, we need to specify what type that variable is. For example, it can be an integer, or it can be a floating point number, it can be other things, we will see different types. Uh, but you need to specify it. In Python, you don't. Uh, you just simply type this assignment here, and uh, this value is saved inside the variable x, and Python figures out what type of variable is. So if you want to ask the type for x, it says that it's an integer. Int says for integer number. Uh, if you say something like z equals 2.5, and then you ask Python for the type of z, you say that it is a, uh, <coughs> you see that it is a floating point number, in short, float. So you don't need to specify this type, but it does exist inside Python. So as I mentioned, there are more types than just integer and float, as we saw now. Um, uh, one of them is the Boolean type. The Boolean type uh, can only have uh, two values, either true or, or false. So let's say, let's call a variable my bool, and let's say, let's call it false, capital F. <coughs> And now you see that it's my bool variable as type bool. Uh, boolean, uh, yeah, basically it's a type that only has true and, uh, true and false as possible values. Uh, let's say this is the other one. And there are different operations available on them. So a particularity of each type is the operations you can do on it. Uh, with integer and float, they pretty much have the same operations available because they are still numbers. Uh, but float is substantially different, uh, sorry, bool is substantially different 
in that you are allowed to do operations such as uh, false or true, which is a logical statement, and the answer to this is true. Or if you say like false and false, then you get, uh, uh, there are operations on bool. Uh, so you have or, and, and also the not operation, which takes only one argument. Not false is true, and you can of course uh, combine, <coughs> combine, ah, uh, oh, sorry. Combine them with variable names and different operations. Uh, yeah, as usual. Uh, yeah, so these are pretty much like numbers, but you have uh, different operators of them. And perhaps more interesting, interestingly, ah, I cannot talk today. Uh, you have operators, operations on numbers or other objects that give you a boolean value as a result. So, for example, if you say four. Uh, is greater than 5, you'll get false as a result. And you can save this result in a variable, let's call it, I don't know why f, but let's call it f, greater than 5. So in this case, f takes a value on the right and the, the operation on the right as a Boolean result. So the type of f is correctly uh, recognized as Boolean. Uh, so you can say something is greater, something is smaller. Oops. Uh, for greater or equal or smaller than equal, you can use the um, yeah the smaller followed by an equal sign. And you see that in this case it is true, while 5 is not less than 5. Um, and same thing for greater or equal. Um, to check equality of two things, well, you know, the equal sign is used for assignment. And in fact, in Python, if you say something like 1 equals 1, uh, which would be a perfectly logical and, and true statement in, in mathematics, this is nonsense for Python, because you're trying to assign the value 1 to a variable which you're calling 1, but you cannot call a variable 1, because 1 is already, uh, is already the name of a number 1. So you could say something like 1 equals 1, and this, in this case we have a variable called 1, but 1 equals 1 uh, is not a valid Python statement. To check that two things are equal, you use double equal sign. This is standard in many programming language languages, not not all of them. Um, but double equal sign means equality, and this is a logical statement with a boolean value, which is in this case true, but in other cases it is false. And to check that two things are different, you use uh, exclamation mark equal. So three is different from one. Yes. Uh, another type which is quite useful is the string type, which is just a sequence of characters. Uh, so for example, if I type something like hello, this is a string, it's just some characters. And you see the Python rep actually replies with single quotes. You can also use single quotes, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, just not mix the two of them. Uh, yeah. And with strings, again, you have, uh, uh, again, different kind of operations that you can do. Let's say my string, we call this variable uh, my sura. And we can check, for example, the length of my string. You can also check it without giving it a name. I just wanted to give it a name. And other operations that you can do, you can concatenate two strings, which means just... Uh, uh, well, let's use my variable, uh, which means just sticking one after the other. And the result is this, it's just putting one string after the other. And you can actually multiply a string by a number. So if you do two times uh, my string here, you get hello, hello, uh, or more than two times, say 10 times. Uh, you cannot multiply two strings. It says it cannot do it uh, because it doesn't know how to do it. it doesn't can, it can it cannot find Python cannot find a way to make sense of this operation. Actually, Python is usually uh, quite good at guessing what you might want to uh, to do for an operation, uh, and sometimes it gives you an answer that don't really make sense. Because, for example, if you type true plus true. It doesn't really make sense to sum two truth values, right? But Python does it anyway, because it says, okay, well, it, 
we usually just commit to, to some two truth statements. So I know sometimes in computer science, uh, we give symbolic numerical var uh, values to them. So like false is zero and true is one. So maybe if he wants, if the user wants to sum them, he just wants to sum these symbolical values. So one plus one equals two. Uh, so this is not necessarily a, a good thing that Python does this. It can be good because sometimes it simplifies your, your code if you want to do certain operations that maybe are not so standard, but Python can still figure out. Uh, but sometimes you have maybe mistakes in your code and, uh, and you cannot figure out why, but because Python is trying to figure out too much and give you answers that maybe don't really make sense like in this case. Um, either way, just keep in mind that there are different types and that different types allow different operations on them. So another interesting feature of Python is uh, lists, lists and set, sets. Uh, they are two ways of collecting uh, numbers or other, other values uh, inside, the same, uh, inside the same variable. Uh, and lists work pretty much like arrays in other languages, but they also have some more functionalities. Uh, for example, I can have a list with denoted by square bracket, which contains, I don't know, the number one, the number minus 4.8, of the string hello, so you see we can mix uh, types when we define a list and the boolean value true. And this is a list. And in fact, you can actually give it a name and use a variable to save this one. And uh, to get the previous line, I, I, I just typed uh, arrow up, up arrow or down arrow, you go through the your history. Um, so by the way, I can, as I said, uh, give a name to this one. And now I have a variable called L which, uh, as Python says, is type uh, list and as these values inside. Uh, and sets are similar, so let's call a set S. Uh, let's say like number 1000, numbers minus 2.5, uh, the number 56, numbers minus 3. But you use uh, curly braces, and this one is a set. And sets and lists are a bit different. Uh, so in lists, lists uh, keep the order, the elements keep the order that you, in which you, you type them. Uh, in sets, uh, sets don't. Uh, you see here it, it's sorted in decreasing order. Uh, it doesn't need to be this way. It's an internal way of Python to represent it. Uh, but it's in any case, it's different from the order we gave the elements in. And another feature is that in a list, I can have repeated elements. Uh, sorry, I wanted a list, not a not a set. I can have repeated elements and see all of them are going to be repeated. But if I do the same thing as a set, uh, only one copy for each element is saved in the set. So they behave like mathematical sets. Uh, they have some operations in common, lists and set. Uh, I can use the len command to find out how many elements I have in a set and also in a list. And we can also check if an element, a specific value is inside our list or set. For example, minus three is in S. Yes, and we get a Boolean value as an answer. Uh, but if I check, for example, minus three, is it in L? Uh, it is not, but still the syntax is valid. And if your set or list contains only numbers, like for example, S here only has numbers, we can also compute minimum and the maximum of S. And also the sum of your our set. Uh, the same works for lists, but uh, so for example, if I want the sum of this list here, uh, I get nine. And so uh, remember square brackets is list and curly braces is set, uh, but our list L contain things that were not, um, that were not uh, numerical values. So for example, if I do max of L, uh, I get a type error because it doesn't know how to compare a string with the other elements to find out which one is, a, is the maximum. A very cool trick that you can do in Python is list comprehension, uh, which works also for sets despite the name. Uh, so you can define a list in a say, mathematical way. For example, let's say we want the square of all numbers from minus one to five. Uh, we can, of course, uh, type them out, like it would be 1, 0, 1, 4, uh, where did I want to get to? I think I said up to 5, something like that. We can list out all the elements. 
uh, but this is not very uh, it doesn't scale well if you want like the square of a list of 100 1000 elements or so uh, we can define the same list uh, in this way so we say we want x square for x in a certain range which we can if we want to list out completely <clears throat> something like that uh, so uh, what was it? For pi, yeah. In this case, I'm still uh, typing out this full list, but there are ways to short to to type this one uh, in a shorter way. I will show you in a second. Uh, yeah, and we can do this. And now you see I get the square value for each x here. And yeah, but for example, we can actually replace this list here by saying in range minus one, and I have to say six if I want up to five because the last number is excluded. And I get the same result. So this list here from which I pick the element x uh, can be a list, a set, or some other collection like range is a particular type of list in Python. Um, and I can also select only a subset of this uh, of this collection here to which from which I select my x. So I can say I want the square of all numbers in this list, in this range here, uh, but only uh, for each x such that x is less than, I don't know, 4. So you see that I get a shorter list. And everything works also for sets. So if I replace this with um, curly braces, if I replace square brackets with curly braces, I get the corresponding set in which, you, as you can see, we don't have the repetition of the number uh, 1. Uh, so this is called list comprehension. And you can actually use more than one variable. So for example, if I want something like, uh, I don't know, x times y for x in 0, 1, 2, and for y in, uh, I don't know, minus 1, uh, 1, something like that, uh, I can build this uh, sludge list here. And and of course, you can combine this uh, expression here. So the expression that you use here can be any expression containing um, containing x and y. And uh, yeah, for example, you can actually build a list out of x. For example, let's say I want a list containing uh, the range from 0 to x for x in uh, 1 to 3. What I get is these three ranges, uh, but I can also do something more complicated. So let's say I want to do something which depends on x for x in, uh, let's say, range from 0 to 5. And this thing that I want to depend on x will be a list as well. And let's say that I want uh, x times y for y in uh, range 0, 5. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, not range, range. Yeah, so you see this. In this way, I get a list of lists, which can you can of course do a list of sets and uh, something like that. Yeah, so this was list comprehension. It, you can pass from a list to a set uh, in a simple way. So, for example, if we have this list L and we want to turn it into a set, we can just say set of L, and now you see that we get the same thing. Uh, we actually set removes this, this boolean value for some reason it, they cannot be in a set um, but you do you do get a set here uh, and of course we have a set s and we can pass to a list by doing this uh, so for example if we want the set uh, but we have a list with repetitions what we get is the the, the corresponding set which has no repetitions um, Okay, but for now, what I, I've shown you, apart, apart from this uh, difference here that we have no repetition and that the order is not kept, lists and set behave in the same way. But you actually have different operations allowed on each. For example, in a list, so let's take still our list L, you can access elements um, with a square bracket operator. So if you say the name of a list and then you type like uh, a number, which is less than from zero to the length of the list uh, minus one, you'll get the corresponding element. So for example, zero is the first element, one is the second element, and so on, until up to len 
of L minus one, which is the uh, last element of a list. Uh, you cannot do this for sets. And you can actually uh, have a, a, a sublist, for say for example, that I want a sublist of L of all elements from the zeroth element to the third, so from, uh, to the second, sorry. Uh, I, I type zero column two. Uh, in this case, the element with the second number uh, index is, um, is omitted because it, it's like from, from zero included to excluded. And, and again, this you cannot do it with sets. Uh, you can actually also do something more complicated, but let me define a new list. New list, and let's say we want all numbers, so we want the list of all numbers. We convert this range, which is a different type of collection, um, to a list. So our new list is this one. And we can access, for example, let's say we want only the in uh, let's say only the first, uh, what is it, the, the number from uh, first number up, up to the seventh. Uh, but let's say we want every other number. So we can say that we want numbers from zero to seven with step two, which means uh, it's going to skip one number and take only the second one. If we say step three, uh, it's only going to take one, uh, one out of the three numbers. <clears throat> and with this trick of, the, of using the, the step value, you can also uh, say that you want, for example, numbers from nine to down to three with step minus one. And now it's going to go backwards. Yeah. Uh, so other things that are um, only valid for lists. So let's take our, uh, still our new list. It's still the same. If you want to add a number at the end of the new list, we can just do use the append command. And let's say we, we append 10. And now uh, we don't get any answer because this command doesn't, it's not an operation. It's a way to modify the variable new list. And you see that we now this, this variable here as this list as a different value and the value is of the numbers up to 10 included because we appended one. Um, if you want to insert a number in the middle of the list, you can use the insert command. And you insert, for example, let's say we want to insert in position four, we want to insert the number 3.14. And again, this operation here uh, changes the value, uh, changes our list. We, we have a different value. So you can only do it if you have a variable. Uh, if this list is saved in a variable, you can modify it. And the last thing you, you may want to do is to remove an element from a list. And you can do it using the del command, which is a quite, quite a strange syntax, because if you do this, you specify an element of a list by referring to its index like this. And uh, let's say you want to re remove the element number five, so which is the sixth element. And we see now that new list uh, as this value here, and the number, uh, which one is it? The number four disappeared because, yeah, because we, we have the one, so it was number five here. Um, yeah, so this is how you remove things from the list. Um, sets have a different set of, sets have a different set of possible operations. Um, and so let's take this set S here. We can remove an element, uh, we can add an element to a set, and, but instead of using append or insert, we simply say add. And remember that with a set, we cannot choose in which position to add the number because, uh, or the value we want, because it's going to figure out on its own. And you see now that it doesn't really keep an order here. The order in a set doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, we can also remove a value from a set if it does exist. So let's say we want to remove number 56. And here we add it. And, and sets, sets, <coughs> sets also support the mathematical operations on sets. So for example, uh, union, uh, intersection, set difference, and this kind of stuff. So if you have, for example, uh, let's call a set T uh, with the number four and five, and we want the union of S and T, we use this uh, vertical bar symbol, which is uh, a bit strange from a mathematical point of view, but it is in analogy with 
other programming languages where this vertical bar means or. And if we have if we do this, we have the union of the two sets. And if we want the intersection, we use the end symbol, the ampersand, uh, which means we want elements that are in uh, sorry that, that are in both sets at once. So yeah, for example, in this case, we, we, the intersection is empty, so it just says well the intersection is the empty set denoted by this symbol. But if we do intersection between two sets that actually have some non-empty intersection, I actually wanted to do this. Uh, you see that now we, we get the set that only contains one thing. And you can also check if a set is a subset of uh, of some other set. For example, with the uh, less command, which means is a subset of. And in this case, it is true. And you also have the subset equal, which is in analogy with less or equal. And of course, you also you also have the is a superset, which is symmetric to the other one. Uh, and in fact, if we go S is superset of, uh, say, this one, we get uh, true. Um, yeah, so these are the basics of sets and lists uh, in Python. OK, now I want to show you something more uh, structured, so some real programming instead of playing with Python as a calculator. Uh, in order to do so, we could do everything uh, in here at, at the interpreter, uh, but I suggest we move on to some kind of editor, like I like Genie. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, this is very, very lightweight. Uh, let me increase the size here. This is a very, very lightweight editor uh, that lets you write code and also execute it. It has support for many languages, including Python. So here I wrote a very simple line of Python code. This is the very first line that we used uh, when we started using Python as a calculator. Uh, we can run it with like this. And as you can see, it doesn't give any output actually. So how does it work? Well, when you use Python non-interactively, so you write a file here, you can save this file. So you see, you can like say, save as and whatever you want. Uh, when you work like this, uh, Python doesn't uh, reply for every line of code with the value of that line. If you want to uh, to get an output, you need to use the print command. And print accepts uh, pretty much uh, anything you give it as a as an input, uh, as a, as a um, sorry as an argument. So you can print, for example, a string, and then comma, and then print this value here. Uh, we save, then we run again. And now we see that we get uh, printed out what we wanted here. OK, but why did I move here? I want to do, I said I want to do something more structured. So um, the real essence of programming is controlling the flow of your program. So the, the body it sets this apart from using just a calculator is using uh, if statements and uh, loops to, to control the flow of your program. So for example, uh, let's say we have a variable here, we call it x, and we say x is 5, very simple. And then we want to do something, maybe this variable x here is 5, but maybe later we want to change it. And we want to do some operations, but we want to do something different depending if f is greater or, than, is greater or less than 10, for example. So in order to do something like that, we need to use the if statement. So if works like this, you write if, then you write some kind of Boolean value, we can do, for example, x greater than 10. And then the code you print here, you need you see Genie does it automatically, but you need to indent. Uh, indenting means uh, leaving some space at the beginning of a line. Uh, you can write some code that is going to be executed only if x is greater than 10. So for example, we want to do like uh, something like uh, compute a new variable, which we call y, which is the uh, square of x, and then maybe print the value, uh, whoops, square of x, followed by y, something like this. And as you can see, uh, here I have this graphical hint from, from the editor. Uh, this is a block of code. So Python denotes blocks of code uh, with this indentation. If you write lines on the same level of indentation with the same number of spaces before the start of the line, 
were going to be executed as a block, which means that this if statement here uh, is going to be executed and everything in this block is executed. And then after the block, I can write something like print goodbye. And then if we execute this code, now keep in mind x, uh, the value of a variable x is 5, so this code here oops, should not be executed. It should be executed only if x is greater than 10. So you see immediately goodbye. But if I change a variable, the value of x to something like 11, now we do see uh, the first part of the code executed. Uh, now we might want to, um, to be able to input this value interactively as we did for a calculator. So we can use the input command. Uh, we can give some kind of prompt like give me value for x and then uh, if we execute this, it's asking us for some value. So we say like something like 15. Whoops, oh yeah, sorry, uh, I forgot, uh, I made a mistake. And the thing is, I, I gave a value and then I asked if this value is greater than 10. But this value, as, as I wrote it, uh, Python doesn't know that it is an integer. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning of the, year, of the video that Python is good at figuring out what type your variable is, but not if you give an input, it's always going to interpret it as, um, as a string uh, of characters. So what we want to do is to say, to force x to be uh, an integer value. Now, if you execute it, we can type 15, and it does execute that part of the code, but if we type like four, it doesn't, and it says goodbye immediately. Okay, so we have a structure of a program that we can use. And now, uh, there's also um, a second part to the if statement, which is called else. And uh, we can write code like this. So if x is greater than 10, print it square. Otherwise, we can tell it to print, uh, I don't know, it's half, for example. Uh, this time I'm going to do it without using a new variable, because it, we can. Alpha of x, and let's say x over 2, let's do integer division, for example. And if we do this, let's say we give a small value for x like 5, and we say that the alpha of x is 2, uh, because I use integer division with a double slash. Okay, so this is the if statement. Um, and another very important statement in programming is, let me, let me open a new file. Uh, we will actually copy this part here, maybe. Let's see, oops. Okay, here, and then let's save it as while.py. And as you can see, Genie supports many different languages, so when you give the extension .py for your file, it's understand it's as, as Python code and it gives you visual hints for what each uh, word means. So this is a string, so it prints it in orange. This is actually a function uh, built in Python, so it, it has a different color. But anyway, I want to see how to write loops. We can use the while statement. The while statement uh, as a syntax is similar to the if statement because it's just the command, the statement, and then followed by a Boolean value, so like say, x less than 10, let's say, and then it's followed by some instructions. So let's say print x, for example. Uh, if we do this, uh, Python is going to execute this code as long as this condition is true. So ideally, inside this block, you want to have some commands that have effect on this statement here. For example, commands that change the value of a variable x. Otherwise, if we execute this code now, uh, it's still going to ask us for input. If we input a value which is uh, larger than 10, this part is never going to be executed. You see it goes out immediately. But if we write a value which is uh, less than 10, you see that it keeps printing out this value because I said, okay, as long as x is less than 10, print out the value of x. And it keeps doing it because it it, it, this condition never changes. This value is always true. Uh, so ideally we want to change this value for x. And for example, we might, let's say we print the value for x and then we change the value of x and we change it, we increase it. We say x is equal to x plus one. So remember that this is not a mathematical equation. 
it doesn't check the truth value of this statement, which is always going to be false, by the way. Uh, what it does, it computes this value here on the right, and this value here is now saved in the value of a variable x. The fact that x is here and also here doesn't really uh, confuse Python because what it does is simply compute this value and then it changes the value of x to match the value on the right. So the two things are done separately. First it computes this value here and then it saves it here. So what happens here is that I, oops, let me execute it, oops, uh, no. uh, then I give a value for x, let's say I give like uh, 5, what happens is, is going, uh, Python will print out 5, then the value of x will be changed to x plus 1, which is 6, so now x is equal to 6, is it still less than 10? Yes, so it prints 6, and then again it increases it. And goes on like this until I get some point where x is 10. And at that point, this cycle will terminate. And as you can see here, uh, it printed up to 9. So 6, 7, 8, 9. x is 9, print x. Then x is equal to 9 plus 1 equals 10. Then is 10 less than 10? No. So it doesn't execute this line of code here. So yeah, this is how the while statement works. The last type of, well, the last type. Uh, the last interesting type of, of, of loop of statement that I want to show you today is uh, is the for loop. So if you're familiar with other programming languages, uh, let me just copy again this line here. Uh, if you're familiar with other programming languages, the for statement, the for loop, is actually just a different kind of loop, like while there's not so much difference. In, uh, in Python, there is a difference. So uh, let's do something like this. Let me, oh, actually, let me save this file. Oops. And OK. So if we say for, now we have to say something a little different. Uh, we have to specify the name of a variable here, a new variable. Let's say, let's call it i. It's usually called i. And we have to tell Python what values what values this variable can assume and we say this variable is in some kind of list so maybe uh well let's say we have a variable x let's say in range from 0 to x and then and then the code in this block here is going to be executed for each possible value of i inside this uh collection here in, in this case i used range but i can also use a list or a set and in this case, what I'm going to do is, well, for example, let's say I print, uh, I don't know, let's simply print i. And then let's say something like, still, um, how much is it? x minus i to go. Uh, let's give a value for for x, uh, let's say 4, and you see that it repeated this instruction for each possible value of i inside this range, which is 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, yeah, and as I said, this range here doesn't have to be a range. It can actually be uh, a list, for example. Let's say we want the list uh, 1, 2, and x, still a list that depends on our variable x. Uh, which doesn't really matter because it could be something like minus 2. And now you see it repeats this, this uh, instruction for each i in this list. First for i equals 1, then for i equals 2, and then for i equals minus 2. So this for is still a kind of loop, uh, but it is not a loop that depends on a condition. It just loops, loops through all the elements in this collection that you give, and, and at some point it's going to be done because collection can only be finite in Python. Um, yeah, so this is it for instructions. The last thing that we're going to see are functions. Okay, so in programming, functions are a way of dividing your code into blocks uh, and then use them as needed. Uh, so let's see an example. Um, so we actually seen examples of functions, for example, the function len, oops, sorry, let me zoom in, the function len, uh, which can be applied to, for example, to a list, uh, is, a, is a function. 
Uh, but let's see uh, how you can define your own functions. So let, let me actually save this one. Okay, the way you define functions is using the def statement. And let's call the function f. And now we have to type uh, how many variables we want. And we need to give a name to these variables, how many arguments for the function. So let's say we want a function in two, in two arguments. Uh, let's call them x and y, not very original. And now here we can do uh, exactly whatever we want in this block of code. We can write Python code as we like. For example, um, for example, we can define a new variable, which we call z, and we initialize it at zero. And then we say sorry, something like for a new variable x in range, uh, I don't know, from x to y, and then we say z equals, we increase the value of z by three, something like that. So we can do whatever we want, but in the end we need to determine the value of f of x and y. And the way we do it is by using the return command. And return can be followed by any expression. And let's say we simply return the value of z. And in this case, uh, when the user writes something like, well, actually in this case, let me show you what happens when I execute this code then nothing happens because what we did uh, was just defining a function f and we never actually used it outside its definition. So this code does actually nothing, but if we write, uh, for example, print f of, I don't know, uh, 210, uh, this command will print out the value of f of 2 and 10, which is, oops, which is 24. And it's computed as said here. So this code here, when I call it, when I call f of two and 10, what happens is this block of code with uh, two in place of x and 10 in place of y is executed. And then this expression here gets the value returned by the function. So in this case, the value of z at the end of this computation. So what happens here is I get this variable z, which is zero. And then for every i from 2 to 10, because I x and y now are 2 and 10, I increase this value by 3, and then I return this value at the end. So it's three times the difference between uh, 2 and 10. This is very simple. Uh, yeah, so you can see with functions, you can execute arbitrary code and return a value. And actually, if I have, for example, a print statement uh, here, this gets printed out. Print, uh, let's say, increasing z by 3. So you see functions, uh, this is what is called a side effect of a function. Uh, the function returns a value, so it is substituted in this expression with its value, but it actually does something else. It, it prints out something in this case. Uh, let's see a more fun example, I would say. Uh, let's define a Fibonacci sequence. So let's, let's keep this code here. And let's define a function and let's call it fib for Fibonacci. And this function is going to take only one argument as input, let's say a number n. And what should this function do? Well, how is the Fibonacci sequence defined? Uh, well, the first Fibonacci number, the zeroth Fibonacci number, if you want to call it, is uh, zero. And then the first one is one. And then for higher n, for every n greater than one, the nth Fibonacci number is defined as the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. Uh, so for example, we can translate this into code and say if n is equal to zero, we return zero, and then the function stops when it hits the return statement. And if n is equal to one, we return one. And as you can see, there can be multiple return statements in a function. And the first one that is reached by uh, the code, by the execution of the code, at, uh, as soon as it reaches one return statement, this value is returned and the function stops ex executing. And then otherwise, uh, we're still in this block of code, uh, but n is not zero or one. We say simply that uh, we return fib of uh, n minus one plus feed of uh, n minus two. And 
at this point you might be a bit confused because you say okay well now inside the definition of fib we are using fib and this should not be defined right but actually yeah it works the name is, is fib is already defined and this is called recursion when a function calls itself and this is just the mathematical definition really um, so let's see what happens here uh, let's remove this statement and actually instead of deleting it let me write it like this this is uh, a comment in python comments in python are denoted by uh, this symbol uh, so this line is not going to be ex executed uh, but i want to print out the fib of let's say four the fourth fibonacci number and what happens here it does print three because uh zero one uh zero value then one and then one again and then two and then three um yeah and if you want for example the fib of zero so what happens if i say fib of zero uh what happens is the function enters here it says is n equals to zero yes so it returns to zero immediately so we should get zero so this function uh this is actually not the best way of uh, implementing a fibonacci sequence generator because it can be quite slow so when we execute this we are computing many many times the same numbers because well we start with n we start with n equals to three for example and it said okay n is not equal to zero is not equal to one uh, so we need to return fibonacci of two plus fib of uh, one and then we execute fib of uh, two and then fib of two said okay uh, return the sum of fib of one but fib of one we already computed it so this does uh, compute some things more than once uh, for example if we do i don't know if with fibonacci of 10 we already have problems no this is quite fast but if we say fibonacci of 100 uh this can take some time to compute it's it's, it's computing uh actually maybe this takes too much so let me try something smaller maybe 20. uh this is still quite fast um, 30. you see it takes some time to compute it um yeah so this is not the fastest way and it actually can by the way we coded it it can go in an infinite loop because if we say fibonacci of minus one uh there is no nothing here that tells it to, to stop to give an error of some kind uh for python minus one is a valid input here and this function is just uh well actually it was a valid input it tried executing it but it um it stopped because it reached uh, too many it, it reached the limit that python has like a li memory limit or something so yeah but anyway apart from errors and such we we are now have a way to define our own functions and one good way to write a program is to divide it into sub steps for each step you define a function and then at the end you just execute uh, each step uh by calling the corresponding function which is much more elegant than just writing the whole code in a all in a row and also when you have a function you can call it multiple times without without rewriting all the code yeah so i think this is it as an introduction to python i think the video is already quite long i haven't checked how much um but yeah so now hopefully you can start writing your own python code bye